Hello, good to have you again. Another week's come to an end, and we're back here in the usual place, trying to solve the world's problems, discussing things we know nothing about, but most importantly, having a table with friends. So you're still doing this Martin Luther King thing? I don't know about Martin Luther, but yeah, I think it's an association that one, uh, it's, it's a friendly association, so thank you very much. And you've added ice cream pants to it. I don't know about ice cream again. Oh, you know, <laughs> sorry, pink. I think. No, these are not pink. They are? But Simon. Yeah, exactly. There we go. You're learning. And Simon is a shade of? Pink. But it's not pink, if you're going to be precise about colors. And, and you should be precise about colors, right? Because oh. your wife has taught you well about these things, right? She's Actually, in the industry. Oh, actually, no, she has. <laughs> <laughs> what are you drinking? Okay, uh, so today is a great day. We are sponsored by Jacob Ngandu, and he was kind enough to give me Japanese tea. And it's called, so actually how you pronounce it, it's like a Shona word. So try and pronounce that. Oi Ocha. Exactly, Oi Ocha. Ocha means tea. Ah. Uh -huh. mm. uh -huh. Well, thank you, Mkuma Jacob, on behalf of Fernando. I know he probably wasn't polite. Yes. You, know, you know, Jacob and I went to the same primary school. Yeah, no, he's a great chap. Yeah, his sister great and chap. I were in the same class, grade mm. one to seven. He's a great chap. Well, at least you're uh, drinking something less boring. <laughs> <laughs> We've had some other interesting Japanese things on the show. But, uh, it's interesting to you guys, not yes. to us. You know, you will tell us how it tastes. Mm. Uh, and what's this uh, interesting golden stuff that we're having in front? So uh, um, the biggest uh, brewer in our country, Delta, launched uh, a new lager that they call Sable Lager. And uh, I, I have to put it out there uh, that before I had a sip of this stuff, I was a fan because um, I'm a fan of the Zimbabwe rugby team, which is called the Sables. And apparently uh, the name Sable was inspired by uh, Zim Rugby. Um, but having tried it, it's um, I, it, it's, it's easy going, but I find it a bit bland. Um, but at its price point, at about sixty cents a bottle, <laughs> you know, in in the supermarket, depending on which rate you use, um, I think um, it's every man's beer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cheers. Um. Drinkable. Um. I don't think you're going to be taking this out for your following guests. No. But, <laughs> but I think when you're, when you're on the road to your raw areas, this is a new alternative. To what? What would you usually take to your rurals? <sighs> when I'm going to my rurals, um, I'm, not, I'm not drinking and driving, by the way. Somebody <laughs> else is driving. Uh, you tend to, when you've got some time, you tend to include uh, something of a bottle store tour. And okay. you find as you leave Arare, there's a lot more variety. Oh, really? You can drink what you normally drink. But the further you go... Oh, okay. Into the middle of nowhere. Uh, <laughs> you eventually get to a place where the only thing you can buy is castle. Mm. Or super. But uh, I, I have a feeling, because of the price point, I think this will be making its way deeper into the countryside. Okay. Yeah, I, I never have that problem because I... I own a cooler box. <laughs> no, but that defeats the point. <laughs> and I'm organized. Okay, we'll have a little, we'll, this is a rabbit hole. Um, <clears throat> in the news this week, inflation's up again. We're now at 72%, <clears throat> uh, around 7% per month, uh, month on month. But both Matuli and uh, the governor tell us we're going to be down to... Is it 35? 25 to 35, yeah. 25 to 35 by the end of the year. Considering uh, you've had, I think, 6, 6, and 7 this year it's so far. We're, we're on 18, cumulative, uh, for the year. You are the bottles of whiskey. <laughs> Thank you well, very much. You should be on silent, really, on camera. It's an issue. Anyway, uh, we're now probably cumulatively on 18 or 19 since January. Uh... Can they slow it down to 1% a month for the rest of the year in order to come in at uh, somewhere between 25 and 35? It's not going to happen. 
I think those were their aspirations. So, you know, we just need to keep that in mind, that they aspire no, 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 no. for inflation to you, be... You, you, can't use the word, you can't use the word aspiration and budget in the same statement. They never follow well, the budget. The budget in, in our country is an aspiration. It is. They never follow it. An aspiration is a hope. How can your budget be a hope? Yeah. Well, when, 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 when the reality and the numbers that we enunciate in the budget you know, are always so different, then we've got to call them what they are, aspirations. Because we've, over the last three, four years, and actually 30 years, we've, um, except for maybe the five years during the GNU where we were talking about US dollar numbers and we were, the margin of error was much, much smaller. For the most part, our budgets and reality have existed in two different universes. Mm. But what's of concern is the policymakers have been pursuing certain policies that a lot of people, including us on this show, have been saying don't work. Uh, and there's this yawning jaw between their aspiration and reality. Yeah. Are we sensing an acceptance and a possible... Okay, about turn might be, might be radical, but a, a possible adjustment in policy? Well, it depends what you mean. I think if we look at the power market rate, you know, we're being quoted 280. Uh, it started the year at uh, around 200. So that move is quite disconcerting. It means that it will double before mid-year. And if you think about it... Uh, if, you, if you extrapolate. If you extrapolate, yeah. Which I wouldn't do, but carry on. Well, no, I'm just I'm, saying. I'm, I'm just clarifying because I don't think he yeah. means it the way it probably came across. Yeah, uh, but the, the the point is, if that happens before mid year, usually our troubles start, you know, second half of the year. So if we're in troubled waters before mid year, I think it's about time. And this is what we said last week. And I don't know who needs to hear this, but uh, I, I I get worried, and it's about time that uh, we relook at the budget and uh, we refocus. So this idea of capital expenditure in this year, I don't think it makes any sense whatsoever. Uh, we saw cabinet coming out with the grain numbers. You know, uh, I must applaud them that, you know, he's a br very brave man, uh, the Minister of uh, Agriculture, to actually tell cabinet that actually we produced less than a million metric tons of maize. I, I missed that bit of news. Sorry? I missed that bit of news. Oh, no, that was on Tuesday. What, when, what, what's the number? So it's 987,000 tons. We thought we were going to get... 2.7 uh, million. 2.7 million. Uh, 2.7, but then GMB, we were expecting 1.7. So mm -hmm. to be specific, we're expecting 1.7 uh, million metric tons to be delivered at GMB, and then another million metric tons to go into no, to remain yeah, in, in people's granaries uh, to then bring to the 2.7. But now we actually only got a third. Exactly. That was delivered. So I think it's brave uh, for the Minister of Agriculture to come out like that. But also what he's trying to do, or perhaps this is where he concurs with you, is perhaps knock some sense into cabinet's heads that uh, actually we haven't been producing as much as we should. So how that will translate in our monetary numbers is more imports, food shortages, and the rate is going haywire. You've got global inflation, you've got um, Russia invading Ukraine, and all those issues now are coming to head. And then you've got an election. Remember, we've just gone through a by-election, which is a very costly affair. And from the sound and look of things, we're going to have a number of by-elections again. And that is very costly. And then you've got the population uh, census, census happening again. But so there's a lot of pressure. Pay for most of that, the census. Well, you, you know what's been happening with our relationship with donors. Um, I think that's sitting on a very precarious uh, place at the moment. But, you know, we don't want to rely on donors. What we want to do is we want to rely on r reality and look at reality. So it's, it's very disconcerting. So, so, if so, I so were... let, let's, let's come back. Let's come back. I mean, maybe we are a bit all over the place. Come back. So we now know that we 
produced maybe half the grain that we thought. Uh -huh. So uh, we didn't. And there was a good year. So the economy didn't grow as much as we thought it did. Because the growth forecast was dependent. Thirty-four percent of the growth in last year was purely dependent on maize deliveries. That's so, where so, so when are we going to get? When are we going to get the GDP number? Um, unfortunately, we'll get them in the third to fourth quarter of this year. That's when Zim stats will actually. So if um, Tuli, I think Tuli was calling it at about six percent, seven point eight. Seven point eight. So you got the knock, IMF was got... looking at it at six percent. I think that you'll be lucky to get two percent or one percent. You'll be lucky. No, but you said it's only third. <coughs> it's coming from agriculture. No, I'm saying if you're looking at the growth, the the, the significant growth, when you look at the growth rate. 34% was coming from uh, maize deliveries, not just the entire, just maize deliveries. Was and if and if that 34%, you cut it down to 10% or 12%. Okay, so, okay, quite so, significant, yeah. so, I mean, again, what should we truly do? I mean, you talk about revising the budget, but isn't it time to really relook at the policy, because the policy is not working. I mean, the budget will simply just. Um, you, you, you're quite we'll right. Yeah, I, I, so I you look at the budget at all, or, or, or I would <clears throat> look at it as a secondary matter. I think that um, we have limited um, space, budgetary space. Um, so our capacity to turn things around one way or the other um, through spending differently is very limited. Uh, what we actually need desperately is a significant injection of capital. And that's not going to happen no matter what we do with the budget. That's at a, a higher level problem with the rules around how do you invest in Zimbabwe if you're excited about investing. But, 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 in so, but is this going to make a difference in months? Um, so you're, you're, you're both right. But I think the point that you're missing is there's a constitutional and legal mandate that the Ministry of Finance has. Right. So one of which is if he's outside of his budget, he has to go to parliament. And what we are just saying to him, and that's just really the constitutional mandate that we're focusing on. All we're saying is this is now inevitable, but you could help the situation. Not that you can make the situation you know, any better. Uh, you're quite right. I think uh, what we need are structural changes. That's not going to happen. But we're just saying that um, if you were to look at your budget, because it's a constitutional matter, if you were to look at it today, you would save Zimbabweans a cent or two. No, but how do we make Because if you better? wait, if you wait until, no, no, you're not, you're not getting the point. The point is, this, this is a constitutional matter. So if, if the run rate continues the way it is, it means that by June, it's going to be worse. And that will feed into inflation. Instead of getting to June, July, this is the right time to set to reset the budget, okay, I hear and you, but, 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 okay, so that you sort of reduce the inflationary pressure. But it, if we were to, to raise an amount like five billion US dollars, that's not going to happen. Today. No, 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 just let humor me. Or in a in a year, it's not going to happen. Humor me, humor me. Okay, six year old, yeah. Right. Would that move the needle? Yes, it, it would. would. Yeah. So if there were some ideas out there around how you could do that, would you? Would it be irresponsible to consider them? And discard your constitutional mandate? No, 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 no. The, the two are not mutually exclusive. So you can carry on working no, on what, what making doing the budget is... better, right? But I'm saying if there are some ideas out there that could lead That's... to us raising $5 billion, not that I'm, uh... do, do, should, should we not consider them? Should okay, we not so not, them not that I'm a Ministry of Finance uh, spokesperson, but that's why we have NDS1. It actually speaks to your uh, investment. You read it. Oh, yeah, no, that's my job, right? We need to read those policies so that when we critique, we critique doing so from an informed perspective, not just from, you know, bar talk. <laughs> <laughs> but the, well, the, the, the point the is discussing policy in a bar. <laughs> but yeah, can yeah, you? No, the irony is not missed on me, but <laughs> no. <laughs> maybe that's where we need to be discussing a lot of this. Uh, mm. Uh, documents, but the, the the point is that speaks to that. Mm -hmm. So that speaks into the vision twenty thirty. All that that speaks to it. Yes, yes, but and but but but, but it's, what, it's clear that it's failed. It's clear that. But we part of the reason anybody. why it's failed 
is because of the inflation numbers, right? Because when you're talking to international investors, they will say, well, that's well and good, right? But look at your inflation number. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that your inflation number, part of the reason why... And currency stability. And currency stability. Part of the reason is because right now your run rate is way higher because you're going to spend the budget, the entire budget, in the first half of the year. Now, if you do so, you're just feeding into the yeah, so, so, inflation. So, so, I, in fact, so I, it comes I, I, down I like to the micro. I like that you speak to um, inflation uh, and the currency because one of the things that happened over the last... Um, 18 to 24 months during COVID is that we had a policy shift where we said that it's okay for people to, to transact in US dollars because we're in this extraordinary time where we have this COVID crisis to deal with. So in as much as it was official government policy to transition completely to Zim dollars, um, there was a special dispensation to let people use US dollars because we're in a crisis. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying right now, uh, as we're exiting COVID, there's a global crisis with high inflation. There's going to be a grain shortage because of the war in Europe. Uh, Ukraine and, 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 and Russia are the world's biggest producers of wheat. They produce a lot of, uh, well, fertilizers um, manufactured from uh, natural, well, ammonium nitrate is manufactured from natural gas. And the price of natural gas is extraordinarily high because of the war in Europe as well. So there are these extraordinary events that we're in the middle of. And we can also, and I think um, the government of the day actually has the power to make these changes, to say, look, we are in a crisis. Uh, we're going to have these challenges because of what's happening in Europe. Let's make some uh, changes to the way we deal with currency. And yeah, no, no, I, I, agree, I agree with that. Yeah. I think and we, if we, we were sort of to agree. do that, and we, uh, um, if we dollarized today, and we went on to global capital markets tomorrow, would it be unthinkable for us to raise $5 billion? Yes, yeah, unthinkable. Not, not as quite as you think. Yeah, but um, part but, of the... But maybe we need to go for a break. Yeah, uh, and just remind me about the dollarizing where we have $1.7 billion that we assume to be real dollars. It may not be real dollars, but let's have that discussion. I think we should drink something more cheerful. This is... Quite depressing, but we'll see you in a couple of minutes. Welcome back. Uh, I hope you're suitably refreshed. I am. Has your nose been powdered? Happily so. Yeah. so. One of the crew members during the break was remarking that your tea bags look like something else. Oh, like what? <laughs> Leave that to your imagination. <laughs> um, anyway, you're dirty making a point mind, about... Dirty minds around you. <laughs> you're making a point about... Uh, I'll just put that there. <laughs> you're making a point about uh, the 1.7 billion. Oh, okay. So, you know, we were talking about dollarization. Mm -hmm. And part of the argument has been that we've got about 1.7 billion dollars in US FCA accounts. And the question that is arising now is how real and how authentic is that $1.7 billion, given our past where we've had what we term local nostrils. 
So if we were to make you a mean one to one gauge, one to one gauge, that sort of uh, thing that has happened. But it, literally, if we were to have a payment for one point seven, that's outside of the country, and we were to use the one point seven that we have, will it go through? Will that wire go through? No, but, no, but it's very that's naive. It, it's very, question. it's very naive and almost uh, economically, financially impossible that you can make a payment for all the money in your monetary system. Because the nature of a monetary system is that it creates money. And the nature of banking is you carry what is called a mismatch. A, a, a bank by its nature is its one of the things that it's allowed to do by its license is to pretend that it has money that it doesn't. But you have all these experts and all these laws and systems in place to make sure that the whole thing doesn't get out of hand. So are you asking if the whole 1.7 billion is there or are you asking if the gap I'm, is I'm getting out of differ, hand? I'm, I'm, I'm going to differ with you uh, very strongly. So you say that by its very nature, the monetary system cannot be meshed. That's not true. That's why when you have uh, a currency board, for example, when it's one-to-one -one meshed, especially with... Uh, your foreign currency reserves. So when you look at Singapore, for example, it means that everything is backed by a dollar, a real dollar. Well, a, real, so, a real something else. A, a, a real, real gold or whatever it is. It's actually backed. So it's not that we don't have, uh, and what you're speaking to is a uh, uh, factional reserve banking, which, yes, would be true of our local currency. Because remember, we've got... Ideally, if you're looking at the central bank uh, balance sheet, we've got three items. You've got the local um, money, which in our instance is ZWL. Then you've got FCA, which is uh, US dollars. And then we've got gold, right? It's just unfortunate. You, we are allowed <laughs> to keep gold as a, as, as a reserve, but our central bank usually actually oversells its, its gold. Uh, but so we've got zero or oversold position in gold. Then we've got um, FCA accounts that hold U.S. dollars. So ideally, those U.S. dollars, you're not supposed to have a mismatch on those U.S. dollars because the mismatch, uh, to your word, if we are to have um, a monetary system that you're supposing, would be in ZWL. So your ZWL mismatch, you will have that mismatch and also then argue that, well, I can have a mismatch because look at my reserve or look but, at... Uh, sorry, this sounds, awful, sounds awfully academic. Does anybody believe that that 1.7 billion US dollars in Nostra accounts actually represents 1.7 real dollars? It should. If we go to Malawi... If we go to Malawi... But we're people, not in Malawi, we're in Zimbabwe. Right? I'm in, saying in Malawi, it, that 1.7 will be 1.7. But does anybody dollars? here in the, the, our country the moment, the, the think moment, that that 1.7 is represented by 1.7 million. You're right. You're, you're, you're right, Rufaro. And that's why we're having but this debate because um, what's out there in the marketplace is that that 1.7 is 1.7 real US dollars. But who are these people who believe this? No, 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 but okay, guys. That is and the I, message I, I, that's I, I, actually I coming to, from I want to go back to what, you, what you're calling an academic discussion, which leads back to my original question, right? The moment you allow, the moment you allow local banks to hold foreign currency deposits, and you allow them to lend. I agree with that position. Be be because Rufaro has a dollar in a local bank, a US dollar in a local bank. He's got a credit balance of $1. Tinashe goes to the bank, and the bank lends him Rufaro's dollar. Be at that exact moment before Tinashe spends it, you both have credit balances mm -hmm. of a dollar. But how much money is in the bank? Just one dollar. Just one dollar. This is normal banking. The question that I think you should be asking is, is the gap between the two and the one. There's internationally so accepted I want to push back. I, I, I want to push it, back a bit. Is it getting too big? Okay, so I want to push back a bit. If we are, strictly speaking, it is very possible to lend the same dollar without creating another dollar. Would you accept that? No, because you, in the example I've just given you, uh, the stock of money has grown. 
No. It's credit creation. That's um, the definition of credit creation. Credit creation is something that's happening now, mm -hmm. but that's not indubitable. It's not. It's not a truth. That's what I'm trying to question. And I'm trying to say, if you, were, if you had gold reserves, so the, the difference would then be covered by central bank reserves in that one hour or one day where you're saying there's a gap, where you've credited somebody and... Um, so that you're saying there's a... There's, there's a, there's there's a, a store. There's, there's a, a backstop. There's a backstop. Which, but but then, this is fiat which currency. Then says, and that's why I'm saying if it's fiat currency... If it's fiat currency... Yeah, but, but that no, ended in the 1970s. No, 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 no. Listen, listen. You say it is an academic uh, discussion, so I'll let and, the and discussion I, with And I'm saying we're going into a rabbit hole, so I'll let the end it. And, and I'm saying that um, you can't create ZWL, and then you start creating US, US dollars. And then you get rid of the gold. And then you get rid of the gold. In fact, you oversell your gold. So you've oversold your gold. So you're short. You, okay, you, have, you, you, you have negative gold. You have negative gold. You have debt in foreign currency. You're starting to create a uh, deposit. Dollar. No, US dollar deposits. You're starting to create it because you believe in uh, fiat. fiat. And then you still have Zim dollar that you're creating at a faster rate than everything mm -hmm. else. That can't be sustainable. Because what you should do with your FCA uh, accounts, or if you're a central bank, is to actually allow the local banks to create as much ZWL as possible against, against your US reserves. Because you're saying, okay, if this thing really goes haywire, we can then release our, our reserves in the market and we stabilize the creation. And we're quite happy with the creation that's actually happening and we're following it and it's okay because we have these reserves. But if you don't have the reserves, right? Yeah, but, but, and but you're Tinashe, creating I, this Zim dollar. Okay, can I, can I paraphrase what Tinashe is saying? Okay, mm. You're right, he's, he is getting himself into his own rabbit hole. But he's saying very simply, uh, the country's money must sit in one of three uh, forms. Baskets, yeah. It must be local currency since we've decided we will have one, it must be, or it could be foreign currency, or it could be gold. Let's just say some other assets. It could be gold, it could be platinum or whatever. You've got these assets that you're sitting on. Uh, you can balance across the three baskets, but you cannot have negatives. In all three. In all three. I'm not disagreeing. I, so what are you uh, um, <laughs> I, uh, what's vexing me is um, this, I, this notion that they, you know, that there's a school of thought out there that thinks that this 1.7 billion is backed by real money. Because the reason why we have Zim dollars in the first instance is because we started off with real money. We started off with US dollars. And then we debased those to the extent that the only way our get out of jail card was to introduce Zim dollars, right? So in, in the context of that history, right? The fact that we've got these nostril US dollar balances and they're 1.7 billion, I, I, I find it incredulous that anyone would think that that number is backed by real US dollars. It, That's what they've said. Have yeah. you been reading our monetary statements? Yes, yes, but, 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 okay. so, but so, we've so, made so, all so, these... So, so the, the subtlety between what you're saying and what I'm saying is it's, it, it, never, it never is as long as you're in a fiat system. The question is... Especially if it's a Zim the fiat question is, system. Is the gap not growing If you're actually big. in a Zim fiat, it must. But if you're dollarized, it's possible. There are two kinds of dollarization. So there's a, the dollarization under the Ecuador dollarization, mm -hmm. where you can create mm -hmm. a US dollar deposits that are not backed by real dollars. And it's usually a ratio of one, one to four, right? Uh, so you can create, for every dollar, you can create three dollars that is not backed by US mm -hmm. dollar, and the system still works, right? That's partial dollarization. Which is, which is probably what you have in the Lesotho, Swaziland. Yeah, there. but... Uh, sort of, but I think Ecuador is a good class. But, but you're speaking but to then, a system in which have, there's some sort of have, discipline. Then you have full dollarization, right? Where every dollar you issue is actually backed by, backed a, real by dollar, a real dollar. Which is what we experienced during the GNU. No, no we actually, actually, that's not no, what we, we experienced. There was credit creation during, during yeah. the GNU. Well, which, not, which is why I keep coming back to the subtlety of, of the difference between what we're saying. Because even in the GNU, it wasn't fully backed. 
And like he's in countries it? like Ecuador, it's not fully backed. I'm saying even closer to home. I, I, but I the banks it. had to manage it. <laughs> doesn't matter who's managing it. The, but first, let's... No, it actually does matter. It, yeah, okay, because I, what he's saying is, if it's managed by the banks, then the banks are the ones that are carrying the risk. But because if, it's if they now fail, they collapse. The, they yes. collapse. The bank, the individual bank collapses, but not all the banks. But then if it's now done by the central yeah. bank, then... But everybody, everybody loses but, but, everybody but, but, if but, they but, fail. But Ecuador is done by the central bank. Yeah. Uh, the Rand Monetary Union is done by the central banks. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, and it works. So my question still comes to, if you're saying maybe the 1.7 billion is not there, you're saying, of course it's not there. And I'm saying, yes, it, it almost certainly isn't all there. The question is, are we now outside the parameters? Or are we still so we have so 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 so, 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 the first so one thing, of the things in the news this week that is telling that informs this discussion is the fact that they were um, the government said look we've allocated 100 million US dollars to clear the backlog at the auction right mm. and you know when I read articles like that I always ask the question but why is there a backlog in the first instance if I am allocating money that's there how do I wake up yeah that's weeks part later, of the symptoms and, but I'll tell you and, I'll tell you why you're backlog. worried. I'll tell you why you should be worried. And you've got parameters. And I'm saying that there's no strict rule on the parameters, but I'll work with your train of thought. If we work with your uh, train, uh, train of thought, look at when, this, when government then decides to pay salaries in US dollars. Because then we must ask the question, where are the US dollars coming from? And if you're paying salaries in US dollars, you're looking at close to 200 million that you're going to pay out every month. And that's where now I ask you, in, with your train of thought, is that sustainable? So that's why when we say the FCA accounts must be fully in the dollar, because we've got, you've got the Zim fiat currency to play around with. But if you start playing with the FCA account again, you're creating a much bigger problem. Right? Because what you're effectively saying... I think saying, you're using the wrong tens. I think that, that problem ha has been with us for more than a year. Because there are then we have a bigger corporates and individuals who have uh, nostril money that won't move when it's supposed to move. Then that then you we can't withdraw problem. when you need to withdraw it. So 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 I don't think it's a secret that this money is not Real. <laughs> one to one gauge here with US dollars. <laughs> okay. Then um, we have a bigger problem. What's unknown is you know is how much of it is there? Is it is it half of it there? Is it twenty five percent? You know what you know where is it? But it's clear that we don't have $1.7 billion. Uh, but do, do you guys have numbers to back this? Well, that's what we have in the discussion. And um, the numbers, it's your train of thought. Mine is actually very different. Mine is you need those deposits to be US dollars. Because when people were making, their real people who put in real dollars into their FCA accounts, and if at some point, there's a big risk, if you're saying at some point those people, will not, uh, that particular uh, individual will not be able to make a payment, that's a bigger risk than perhaps everybody wants to admit. Because there's somebody, because remember there's always somebody uh, who loses out. There's a guy out there no, no, but you, who's but you, but you, deposited But you're real... copying out the question, Tanisha. I mean, we're having this discussion because you've got, you've obviously got anxieties about this. Yes, and we all should, and, but Rivera do, doesn't. And, and because do you, because Rivera, 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 Rivera is a, a, a discounted <laughs> long, yeah, so long back. Yeah, long back. Yeah, but, but guys, you, it's but, never, but, it was but, never but, used but, but let, Let's be responsible because, I mean, there's people watching the show. Do we have numbers that can back? No, we don't. The only thing we can do so, 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 so. is to allow the central bank and the Ministry of Finance to clearly enunciate what is actually happening with our FCA accounts. They need to actually come out very clearly so that we then take but we, cue. See, see, Otherwise, see, see. we then take Rufaro's cue, which is and, 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 don't and, and, believe. I, I'm, not, I'm not asserting that uh, there's zero there. I'm just saying that there are good reasons to believe that yes. it's not one-to-one. -one. And, 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 and okay, b besides what happened during the previous monetary era, what good reasons do we have? So the auction uh, is telling. Right, because the auction no, is the auction sits outside of uh, SCA, and they, they, I would like to correct you. Mm. You seem to think it's one to one. This is not about one to one. These are real. U so when you have an FCA account, mm -hmm. these are real US dollars. Mm -hmm. As far as you're concerned, these are real US dollars because you got some receipts. You're an exporter, and you got some receipts, and you put them in your FCA account, and the central bank actually allowed you to keep indefinitely. 
So, but he's 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 asserting that. So uh, it's not one to one. No, he's he's actually asserting that the the two are different currencies. Uh, and <laughs> I'm paraphrasing. This is his point. Mm-hmm. He's asserting is that, that the two, that what, the, the two that are different saying? currencies and um, <laughs> are not equal. Am I right? Yes. So you're saying my export dollar and what's in my SCA? Okay. So 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 so. Um, okay. Let, let, okay. It's be, uh, economics is a behavioral science, right? So let's do a little poll among ourselves about the, the behavior. Uh, a dollar in a note on the table, a dollar on your mobile wallet, a dollar in your bank, your local bank, a dollar in a foreign bank. Are they worth the same to you? No, no, they're, they're, they're not. That's all he's saying. No, that's not what he's saying. Because a dollar not and a dollar in a foreign bank account should ideally be the same. That's what he's saying. Yeah, and I'm saying an Nostro dollar and and a note. Because one to one is an exchange. The minute you say one to one. You're getting technical. No, no. When you say we have to be. Because when you say one to one is an exchange, the dollar I have and the dollar in the SCA. It's not one to one. Okay, let's talk. It's about, exactly okay, the same. Let, let's it does about, not have an exchange. Okay, let, rate. let's talk about parity, or let's talk about. So does what does one to one mean? One to one is an exchange. Don't, rate. don't even entertain this. He's, he's going down the rabbit hole. No, you, you, you guys no, are no, saying no, the I same think, thing. No, we're not. We're not. And you, and, and, and I want us to be uh, technically uh, precise here because we're confused. The reason why we were saying one to one is because you're introducing an exchange rate, but you can't say that uh, a, a ten dollar US dollar not and a ten dollar in an Morgan or Wells Fargo account, and you say that it has an exchange rate of one to one, doesn't have an exchange rate. It's exactly the same. Yeah, okay, he's coming from an economics background. We're coming from a finance background. We'll let him. That's why we have a problem. Okay, okay. maybe we're we'll, 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 coming from an accounting maybe background. Maybe he should his nose, and we, and we can <laughs> take this up. Yes, you're, you're coming from an accounting <laughs> perspective, and that's why we then get into the problem that we have because what the central bank is accounting as real dollars, it's saying the 1.7 is real. Okay, you will let you go and powder your nose. Hey, I think you're even getting a little bit red in the face there. Uh, we'll be back in a couple of minutes. Welcome back. Are you cooler? Yes. We're actually worried about you. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you worried about me? <laughs> okay. I mean, okay. So yeah, we've talked about about the currency, bank deposits. Uh, we've also touched on inflation. We've got this election coming up in about a year's time. Oh, probably quite a few more. Uh, by elections, isn't it amazing that one man can have so much power over the rest of us? But anyway, uh, we've got quite a few by elections coming up, and then an election at the end of them. Um, will, will we continue to see free markets, or is, will markets continue to be as free as no, they I think, are? I think you will start seeing uh, price controls. That's what I think. 
because we, we've already the the inflation lag we're already starting to see it the currency disparity discrepancies we're starting to see it so i think price control well look i think at a very high level we already have an important price control which is the official exchange rate uh otherwise known as the auction rate uh because basically it um determines the rate that money can change hands from uh, hard currencies to zim dollars uh, through legal channels. And nobody believes that um, 1 to 142 is fair and reasonable, which is why we have a parallel market. And I think that's, that's, that's a macroeconomic uh, price control. Um, and but nobody's been using this in their normal day-to-day -day lives. So I, I think um, the challenge is that um, because you have an official rate, right? If if you're selling something in a, a retail outlet for a dollar, um, and you use the power market rate to price it uh, in Zim dollars, you have legal exposure. You can wake up tomorrow and be in trouble with the authorities for using a power exchange rate. But de facto, is it happening? I mean, so, so, I mean, we, 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 I mean, whenever we talk about the parallel rate on the show, well, I always talk about the rate I was asked to swipe at. He always refers to a pharmacy. So, people are so, 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 I think the well, challenge is the, 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 the challenge is obviously to be fair to the authorities. They know that uh, the official rate is not the real rate, so they have been restrained and accommodative of retailers trading outside that. Um, you know, with it, you know, outside the, the the official rate, but I think that um, from time to time, when the rate runs away from us, and there is pressure for something to be done about pricing, there will be um, the prosecution. Or yeah, you know, they'll take action. So, and anybody in the, the retail space is exposed to that, and I think they're alive to that, um, and uh, that's the big risk. Uh, if you're selling in both Zim dollars and US dollars, you can wake up one day and have the authorities knocking at your door saying you're doing something illegal so and shut you down. I, th I think we need to keep in mind that uh, SI 127 is, still stands as is. It hasn't been changed. And SI 127 says if you price a good above the official exchange rate, it's illegal and there's a fine to it. That still holds. Okay. So, so, so there is uh, a real risk. I agree with Fafara that that risk, uh, as far as SI 127 is concerned, that risk, uh, in, uh, that, that risk affects all retailers, affects everyone in Zimbabwe. Yeah, but we've got lots it's of not even we've got, we've got lots of laws on the books that people that that they they're on the books, but they, yeah, until they, the they day until until the day it matters, right? And you started this segment looking at going into an election. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter until the day it matters. And it doesn't matter until you are that one guy that they target. And, 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 and uh, if you look at the historical precedent, right, um, Tinashe is absolutely right. Because you, what you've seen is um, the authorities are quite blasé about it until they wake up one day and they decide, actually, this is a problem. And we saw in 2020, the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange being shut down. We saw the suspension of all mutual and PPC. Um, in September of the previous year, you saw a bunch of companies having their accounts frozen very publicly. Um, so when... Last year we saw people getting arrested. Yes, we did. Yeah. So, so, so when um, the authorities, uh, for whatever reason, feel that things are going out of hand or that they need to act, and this is not based on some sort of data set with objective uh, milestones. They can literally just wake up and think, actually, we need to do something. And the law is on their side. And they'll take action. Mm -hmm. And it will disrupt business. Is there a way of predicting when this will happen? I mean, so if I was to call it. Essentially, we all, well, you guys are all criminals. <laughs> law abiding <laughs> citizen. <laughs> Uh, every time, I mean, even the big supermarkets now are, sw are swiping. Your local parish 60, pastor 70. is a criminal. <laughs> yeah. 
So, 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 I, so, 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 so above, if, uh, if, if I was a betting oh, man sorry. and I am, uh, um, and I had to call it, I'd say, look, if you have a couple of weeks of um, double digit uh, devaluation uh, on the power market, um, you will see some action, you know, the, because they're never happy to see uh, the Zim dollar devalue uh, aggressively. So we're at 270. If we woke up next week and we're at 320, 325, I suspect very much that we will see some aggressive uh, response from the authorities. And who's going to get picked up? Me? It could mom? be you. Could be your mom. Could be anybody. Could it be the pastor? <laughs> yeah. Anyone. So, so how do we live our lives? How do we manage the risk? Ducking and diving. Yeah, but you guys are taking us to a very dark space and 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 i like to you, you don't want to put this dark beer well look i i i think it's easy drinking i i don't mind it uh extremely sweet um well i'm a heineken drinker as well i i don't think this is as sweet as heineken i think it's 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 if i was to criticize it at all i'd say it's uh a bit bland don't you like the way his tone doesn't change from discussing serious economic subjects <laughs> to, to beer? <Yeah. laughs> if you were no, but, but listening to me, you'd so, think the so you know, there's the, there's a guy who um, you know I hold in high esteem, and he's got a very interesting um, framework in thinking about uh, opportunity. You know, his name is uh, uh, Mark Anderson. He runs a venture capital f uh, fund at, in Silicon Valley, and. You know, basically his job consists of uh, hearing out all these entrepreneurs trying to raise money. And a lot of the people, a lot of the partners in the, in the, in the venture fund um, listening to these pitches are thinking about risk. Okay, so George has come in, he's presenting his idea. What can go wrong? You know, what are the gaps in his uh, vision? And Mark has a different perspective. When he's sitting there, listening to the entrepreneur make his pitch, the question th that he's interested in is, if you succeed beyond your wildest dreams, you know, how big is your company going to be? Like, what, is, what does that look like, right? And if he's excited by that vision, then he's, he's, he's in. Because all the risks and potential pitfalls and problems, we can manage them if we have the smart, a smart enough strategy. And this is what I'm thinking about in a Zimbabwean context today, to say the world has changed. The Americans are talking to Venezuela, they're talking to Iran, they're talking to anybody who's got certain resources who they wouldn't ordinarily talk to because we have this challenge with the supply of certain commodities and resources. We don't have oil. Right. No, we no, might. I hear you. We might. Uh, <laughs> but what I'm saying is, so, and as much as we have been truant uh, financially for the last, since independence, <laughs> okay, um, and the idea of trying to raise money in, in global capital markets would be ludicrous. Uh, we'll, You've conceded. <clears throat> the world has changed, right? And I believe, I could be wrong, that we have an opportunity to have a conversation because we... I'll, I'll tell you oh, what the opportunity oh, is if you want to look at opportunities something that Zimbabwe has not enjoyed in the last 20 years. And I think that it's the... It's Did where you the just growth, pivot this whole discussion? It's, it's where the growth is. So the growth really is, is in debt forgiveness. So if you look at our national debt, it's now close to $20 billion. And there is an opportunity. Right now, the way the world is, is that if we present ourselves uh, for EPIC or any one of those... Uh, or, or even bilateral approaches. Bilateral. Or it's probably better under EPIC because you're you're looking at the blocks, the different... Uh, no, I mean, that's why I say even. Yeah, even. HIPIC is politically complex, but even... Because, I mean, you talk about a five billion number, right? Yep. Oh, but and it's probably better. It's not, I'm not saying it's... That's why I say even, because it's... Yeah. It's uh, plan B. But let's say we can't do the politically demanding HIPIC. But you're talking about five billion as being a magic number. We can get five billion if we can find the right creditors to approach and get half a, half a billion, a billion shaved off our debt from five, uh, six or seven creditors. In exchange you, for opportunities to extract got certain billion. important commodities uh, no, out of no, our country. It, it wouldn't I, be. So, so that's not. Okay, you guys are creating your own it, opportunity. 
Can I just explain my, <laughs> my opportunity? The real opportunity. So not the fuzzy opportunity, but the real opportunity is that when you look at Nigeria, you look at Ghana, you look at all these countries over the last 20 years, they've had debt forgiveness up to up to 70%. Nigeria, 2006-2007, had 70% of their debt tied off. And I'm saying that's the real opportunity because if you look at Zim and you took away 70%, where well, you don't have to, there is no commodity tied to it, there is no um, business idea tied to it. It's okay, we understand your problem and we understand that you want to start afresh and we're going to take away 70%. If you, if you look at the economic growth that Ghana and Nigeria, specifically I use those uh, two examples, their economic growth over the last two decades is pretty much predicated on debt forgiveness. But they have oil. Yeah, that's true. But we are in a unique geopolitical position where the world is defining who is a pariah state and who isn't. Right? And we're taking sides. The world is actually taking sides along that um, divide. So if we just happen to be the good guys, if we're on the side of the good guys, I think they will be willing to talk to us. Because what they don't want, you know, it's axis of evil or whatever geopolitical philosophy that they might be running with. But if we show ourselves, um, and to your point, uh, when you look at East Africa, East Africa has shown itself to actually be on the good side, that they're willing to seriously uh, consider their economies and their political stability as an important factor. And they have talked to... The, when you look at whether it's China or Western capital, and you're starting to see a lot of flow of capital going into East Africa. And that's the opportunity that we have. That yeah, if, if we are Zimbabwe, none of the other countries, right now Zambia is going through its secondary EPIC. Uh, I think right now they have a conference where they've invited all sorts of people. Uh, the debt in Zambia now it's close to $32 billion. So we are... Uh, um, and you know you can speculate how they got to thirty-two billion dollars, but it's a world willing to talk to Zambia. This is the second bite to the cherry. So remember, Zambia got its debt forgiven. Uh, I think it was in Manawasa. It was during yeah, I um, think uh, uh, around two thousand eight ish. Two thousand and eight ish. Yeah, the, the Manawasa. Manawasa. I, I remember it was Manawasa. And within a ten-year period, they had they traveled <laughs> and into bigger trouble. And the world is still willing to talk to them. They got 1.4 billion uh, bailout by the IMF, and now they're looking at restructuring. And, and there's serious people who are in Lusaka at the moment, and they're looking at restructuring. So it's not beyond um, but I the think, world I, looking I, I, at them think as a special case. I think it's. I think this is the right time. I think so it's that's naive, why I agree though, to think that. You, just, it, I don't see us going cap in hand. Oh, to the Paris it's not club. naive. Okay, so so okay, so uh, bear in mind, HIPIC is pretty much standard. So it's not something that you are going to, and it's outside of their uh, remit. HIPIC is something that is there that the World Bank, that the G7 have looked at and said we're willing to do this, but obviously there are countries that enjoyed it and we didn't. Yes, but, and but, it's but, very specific in terms but, of. But, the, but, but those, the, those guys, and those guys often are above what Tinashe has said, we've got sweeteners on the table. We've got all these commodities. Mm. Yeah, well, do we have, any, Zambia do, do we have anything <laughs> particularly unique? <clears throat> Maybe the platinum. Maybe we've, we've got, got palladium. We've got nickel. But we've got lithium. We're not the only ones that have any of that. We just happen to have. Uh, no, no. A I, think, I think what Rufaro is saying, and I agree with him, that what we have that is unique is. Growth that hasn't happened. So opportunity, business opportunity, to, to grow production, opportunity, okay, to grow production, yes, investment opportunity that hasn't but, happened but, but, in the last twenty years. But, but let, let, which let's, could, go, let's go back. Two which steps. could be material. Let's which go back two steps. Right? You, you, the HIPIC framework is established. You're right. But part of that HIPIC framework is you, uh, who've who's been a rebellious child, uh, now going to your parents, who are billionaires, and say, "Mom, Dad, I actually." have been a bad child, I need your help. <sighs> Realistically, do you see this happening? A remedial action in school was something that we did, and we did happily so, right? But there were um, kids that didn't. There were kids that refused to do it. Oh, well, 
are, are you saying that you're that parent that will deny your kid a uh, remedial class? No, sorry, I don't understand the example. Okay, so I'm saying that um, we are due for remedial class. Yes, but and do, we should just go and do it. But do you do you see us being it's that within kid? our power? And also, everything also, else is. I, I think you're framing it wrong, right? Because. If, if, if you're in government, if you have an obligation to take our country forward, right, and there is low-hanging fruit, which is a 70% write-off of our debt and significant foreign investment, why right. wouldn't you take but, it? But, but if you why wouldn't? disagree fundamentally with the people that are offering it and the conditions. What, what are you disagreeing fundamentally with? The conditions that they're going to impose on and, and I suspect very much that uh, before you answer that, Whatever the conditions were, and I'm not going to answer that because um, he's, be, he's be, trying to trap me. Be, be, you know, um, because the world changed after the 23rd of February this year, right? And whatever the conditions would have been if we were sitting having that conversation on the 23rd of February, those conditions are very different today. In fact, they, you know, I think, and they're not demanding in, in any fact, way. They're not on the 23rd. We might not even have been allowed a seat at the table to have that conversation. But you reckon now we are? There's Absolutely. A huge, there's a seismic shift. The world has changed. The <laughs> world has changed. And if we don't take advantage of it. You raised East Africa. You said I raised it. We raised it off camera. But you brought it. Mm. You want to talk? Uh, well, I, I think that East Africa, if you look at uh, political stability, which is one, uh, if you look at Southern Africa, Western Africa, uh, we've seen a lot of turbulence. But East Africa has actually managed to sustain some sort of political stability uh, for more than 10 years, more than two elections. Well, you have yeah, yeah, 2007 yeah. in Kenya. Uh, um, but, but that, that, that the, was anomalous. But if you really, yeah, got, no, if, you, yeah, if you've yeah, got yeah, a trend, you're, true, you're true. going back to the end of Moy. Yes. From the end of Moy, which was what, late 96, 97, something like that? Yeah. Uh, you, you are right. Uh, but the standard, you know what the standard is for political stability? It's two election cycles. Mm. If you can hold two election cycles, the buy so low. Uh -huh. But all you need to do, all you need to have are two election cycles where there is handover of power, transfer of uh, political power. And we've seen that in uh, East Africa, we've seen it in except Kenya. in Uganda. I think Uganda <laughs> is an outlier. <laughs> they, 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 they are our friends. We, li we like that guy. But um, uh, we've seen it in Kenya, we've seen it in Tanzania. Yes, uh, exactly. Okay, Ru Rwanda, Rwanda is special, but uh, Burundi, we've seen it. Yes, exactly. Um, who, who's that? Who, who else is in East Africa? Well, South Sudan. South Sudan. Well, okay, so they, maybe, they, maybe they, they have quite a few exceptions. <laughs> but, uh, but, but, but the big economy is a move. Compared to the moving. rest of Africa. Compared to the rest of Africa. And they're looking at a common currency now. Uh, it's something that they want to have. Um, perhaps in the next year. Uh, say 2024. They should have uh, a single currency. And I think that that is huge. That they, they've, already done, they've already done the movement of goods and people. So, mm. uh, you know, you don't need a visa. Kenya, the biggest uh, economy in East Africa doesn't require visas from East Africans to come and work in their country. Uh, moving goods across borders is completely seamless. I was working in Rwanda 2008, nine, and we used to get, I was working with a construction company. We used to buy our raw materials from Kenya and Uganda, and we'd get them across the border same day because it was so, and that was 2009. I could, you can only imagine what it's like yeah, today. No, they've, today. Done, they've done They're progressive. They're more progressive than the rest of Africa. Less progressive than the rest of the world. But hey, the bar in Africa, the bar is pretty low. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that the pressure that we're seeing in South Africa, the turbulence that we're seeing in South Africa might push South Africa to actually become a regional head and actually sort out the problems in Southern Africa. Because Southern Africa has... I, I, for whatever reason, we've had political instability that... Um, we, we've actually been... Politically, we've been more stable than them. Zim is the exception. And Eskwatini? The, 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 material countries. <laughs> 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 this is perhaps a good place for us to stop before we get into any more trouble. It's been lovely having you along. Uh, as you Mozambique? Can see, as you can see... DRC? No, Mozambique, Mozambique's had transfers of power. Peaceful ones. Yeah. You know, we have a, a war in Mozambique. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> As you can see, we actually don't entirely know what we're talking about. We just hope that we inspiring you to have some discussions with people around you. Uh, we really enjoy getting your feedback on our social media pages. Uh, so keep it rolling. Um, 
and yeah, talk to this, talk about this to people around you. And if you've got access to policymakers, be sure to whisper some of these issues into their ears and get them thinking too. Otherwise, have a lovely weekend. COVID is real. Stay safe. Be good. If you can't be good, be good at it.